having a house. Depending on their contracts, rent could be done weekly or monthly in forms of cash, post-dated checks, installment, or credit cards. Remember to pay in time fellas or else, well, it's not like that, mostly. Some dorms have what we call prepaid electricity by loading your card which comes with a key. Once your load runs out, electricity in your dorm will also run out. Solution, reload by heading to the nearest store that has prepaid electricity loading. No worries! After that, it's will send a text to you to remind you how much load there is left on your card so that you'll know when to reload. On the other hand, for those who do not have this system, the default is there are electric meters per room to determine how much the room has consumed and by the end of the month, you'll be alerted of the price. Oh, speaking of... Conserve water, girlies! Bathing water is also a primary concern and thus often has the same system as electricity. That is, if your room has its own restroom, other dorms implement a common CR per floor. As students, we wear and change clothes as often as occasions. Uniform, at home, formal, conforming to the school dress code, except we don't get to clean them. Because washing machine or irons aren't allowed. According to both what I've read in different dormitory rules and personal experience, that leaves you with the laundry shops nearby to get clothes cleaned, dried, and ironed. That last part, you don't really have to. Those dorms that ban cooking wares because there will always be one tenant that will set the whole building on fire. If you haven't heard the rumor who that person is from your dorm mates, you probably are the tenant. So, you have no choice but to buy outside, fast food or street food. But if you miss the taste of home, you can buy at Carinderias near you. which is the usual pairing up system. If you have, then you're stuck with them for the next years of your life. Man, I remember the first time I met her. She was cool, lived up to my first impression, but she had this habit of always leaving her keys. So I always end up going back to the dorm at random times during the day just to open the door for her. But as soon as I voice out my concern, she has improved. Anyways, I'm here to elaborate on the types of rooming. Number one. The nice roomie. That's it. They're nice. I'd even say suspiciously nice. They take care of you when you're sick or help with your schoolwork. <laughs> Number two, the hoarder. I'm frankly proud of that term because I just learned that unfamiliar word just two seconds ago. Now, here's where things can go down spiral. If your roomie is somewhat of a hoarder and has a lot of clothes lying around that they don't even wear or need, maybe it would be a great idea to suggest donating some stuff of those to charity. Beneficial for both your rooms since fewer stuff means fewer mess. And for the kids, you'll be giving your pre-love items too. Number 3. The Curved Up This is type of roomie that chooses to stay within its territory. 
doesn't say much just there the best way to be in good relationship with this kind of roomie is to just approach first as if they want to have dinner together or go to church you never know maybe they are just waiting for you to make conversation Rui, you okay? I deduce that he's comparing those two books. He doesn't talk, but he does have a lot of insights. What's up, Abonation? <laughs> Rui, I heard you just moved in last December. How is it so far? Oh, Aliyah, it's great. You know, living in a dorm can prevent tardiness, and also, it can prevent coming home at the wee hours of the night, such right, as 8 right. p.m. and 9 p.m. True, true. Also, almost everything you need are just right across the street. Computer shop? Check! School supplies? Check! 24-hour restaurants? Check! But even with those in mind, they're nothing compared to living at home with your parents and siblings. Exactly. Living alone or maybe with roommates means that you must do household chores yourself and allowances and offset. How to live your budget? Articles you'll come across and read will smartly advise you less is more. Basically, bring only the amount of money you need for one meal and what we call emergency cash. A benefit is that you won't be bringing your whole wallet which means you will least likely misplace it. This must be the most effective yet most difficult. If there is a huge sign that says sale in one of your favorite stores, you'll understand that it's simply a temptation and marketing strategy. If there is a buy one get one in mm, major X. If you learn to say no, then you will be happier person with happier wallet. Before we end, I would like to say that never give up. Because these burdens are only blockages, not the end of our path. I agree. I may have moved out of my dorm, but that is because of my own safety. Which, speaking of, watch out for shady dormitories without stable fire escape plans, surveillance systems, or contracts. Stay safe! And see you on the Rock of Apples!